Welcome back to the channel, I'm Tyler, aka Tylee Talk, and today I'm gonna to be giving these modern logos vintage redesigns. If you're new here, I design, redesign, and critique logos. So if that piques your interest, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel. I just wanna say a huge thank you to 50,000 subscribers. The growth I've seen has been so crazy, and it's just kind of always been a dream of mine to have some kind of following on YouTube, so I am beyond thrilled and just happy and grateful. So thank you for being a part of that. Now, today I decided I'm gonna redesign four modern logos. Target, Minecraft, Twitter, and Nintendo. I tried to give each one of these a different feel, like they're from a different decade. So some of them are more 70s and 80s inspired, while some of them go back to more like the 40s and the 50s. I originally made all of these on a live stream here on the channel. I'm gonna be going live once a week after work, and it's a lot of fun to kind of get your all's inputs on which logos I should do, how they should look. So definitely check that out if you're interested in collaborating on the next video. All right, let's get into it. So for this one, I started with Target, and they're really one of the only ones on this that actually have an older logo, but even that one just looks very similar to the current one. So I wanted to go in a completely different direction. So my idea for this one is that I wanted to make it look similar to an old dartboard using more muted colors. I didn't want it to look extremely uniform because I feel like a lot of 50s logos had a lot of organic shapes in them. So I wanted to make each slice of the dartboard like a slightly different shape. So in order to do this, I went ahead and drew two circles using the shape tool in Adobe Illustrator, and I put one inside the other. Then I took the pen tool and I drew out from the centermost point and made the basic overall shape of each slice. Then grabbing the circles and the triangle, I opened up the Pathfinder window and hit divide. This then made the slices be cut out and you can double click on the parts you want to delete and you're left with the outer ring and the inner rings as their own shapes, but still part of that slice. So I continued doing this around the whole pie until I had each one cut out. Then using this old dartboard I found as a reference, I colored all the different slices and rings until I was happy with how it looked. And my idea for the word target was to make the top of the T look like an old dart. So I found a reference on Google and then using the pen tool, I drew the top of the dart. And the cool thing about this is if you draw the dart and then you draw the bottom a perfectly flat line, you can copy the shape from the top and flip it horizontally and then move it down to match and use the shape builder tool to connect the two so you have one shape that's perfectly symmetrical on the top and the bottom. So next I found a font on Adobe Fonts and this one is called Fino Sans and I typed out target in that font and I played around with the sizing of the T with the dart and I worked on the placement a bit. And then here is the final result. I could not be happier with how this turned out. I feel like this is one of my favorite things I've ever made for this channel or my TikTok. I love how the dart looks like it's just about to make contact with the board. I love the font and all the colors I chose. And I'm also just really happy with how I made the slices not be perfectly uniform. I feel like the changes in the sizes make it look more dynamic and give it more movement. It feels more alive, if that makes sense. Okay, up next I have Minecraft and I wanted to pick a real blocky font for this one since obviously Minecraft is made up of mostly all blocks. I found this font called Aerotech Ultra, typed out Minecraft, and I wanted to put a box above that so that combined with the word Minecraft, it made a perfect square. So I made that out and my idea was to make it be different rectangles that made a gradient down toward the word Minecraft. I made these rectangles to act as a spacing reference so that it was the same space from the bottom of the rectangle to Minecraft as each of the spaces in between. And then I decided to kind of play around with how I wanted to make the rectangles look. So once I was happy with the placement and the sizing of everything, I selected it all and used the minus front option from the Pathfinder window to remove all the little spaces in between the rectangle. Initially, I thought I might just do it in green and brown to kind of match what the main ground block looks like in the game. But then I decided to make the top of it be green, the brown in the middle, and then gray at the bottom to kind of mirror all the different layers in Minecraft. Like when you dig down, it goes from grass to dirt to rock. So I made everything the right colors by using the actual pieces from the game as a reference. And finally, I knew that I wanted to make the zombie face be somewhere in the logo since it's actually in the A in the original logo. So I played around with the placement event and I finally landed on putting it in the R and here is the final result. I also really like this one. I feel like it looks like it could be on like a vintage 70s t-shirt. I love how the colors turned out and the gradient and I like that it kind of references the actual game. But it looks like you'd be playing this one on like an Atari system instead of on your phone or the computer. Okay, next we have Twitter and I actually found in doing some research for this 
that the Twitter bird, people think it looks like this species called the blue naped monarch. So I decided to use that as a reference and give it a more hand drawn feel for this one. I did this by using the pen tool, giving it a stroke and changing the settings so that the corners and edges were rounded. If you're not familiar with how the pen tool works, it works by selecting, clicking to make a point and then clicking somewhere else to make a connecting point. And when you make that second point, you can drag to give it a curve. And then the next point that you make, it'll automatically follow that curve unless you tell it not to. So I did this with basically the whole bird and I wanted to give it kind of my style. So I made the beak a little stylized. I added in some lines where there really weren't lines to kind of give it an effect that looks like feathers. And once I was happy with the outline of this, I wanted to give it a bit of a grounding effect because right now it just looks like it's floating in thin air, but like not actually flying. <laughs> so I added a blue circle around it and I kind of wanted it to look like the Twitter blue, but a little more muted since a lot of these vintage logos are a little more muted. And I played around with the placement of this uh, for a while until I was happy with it. I also went ahead and made the beak and the tail white. And then I found this font called Acer Bat Text Noir, which is very fancy sounding font, but it looks very fancy. <laughs> and when I put it over the blue, the letters were actually transparent. So I just gave it a white background by uh, typing out Twitter and then using the pen tool to fill in the background and then making the font come to the front so that the white was behind it. And the last step was I just added a tiny little white highlight in the eye to kind of give it that twinkle effect. And here's the final result. I feel like this one could be like a design for an old bar or a speakeasy type of sign. I could see it on a street sign, on an old menu, even like on the side of an old white van maybe. I think the hand-drawn look with the pen tool turned out better than I could have hoped. This is actually one of the first times I've been using the pen tool to do an illustration and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I also like that I threw in the blue element so that it kind of references the modern logo. All right, last but not least, we have Nintendo. My idea for this one was to give it a bitmap feel so that it kind of looked like an old Nintendo game. And when I was looking at the history of Nintendo, they actually go back way into like the 1800s, but not a single one uses this bitmap technique. So to start, I found this font called Low Res 9 Narrow Bold. And I wanted to give this one a 70s or 80s kind of colored gradient, just because when I think of vintage video games, I think of like 80s arcade games. So I found a reference for those colors. I typed out Nintendo in the low res font and gave the letters outlines. Then I played around with the kerning a little bit to make it more tighter and uniform. I made the letters go from this burnt red all the way to this very muted light yellow. And when I was happy with that, I made these two arches on the end to kind of nod to the modern pill shape of the logo right now. And also I just feel like arches signify retro design and they were used in a lot of retro designs. And I messed around a little bit with the colors until I finally landed on this. Again, I couldn't be happier with this one. I think all four of these are some of my favorite designs I've ever made. I feel like this one's a little understated, but it reads exactly how I was hoping it would. I feel like you could see this logo on the side of an old Nintendo arcade game and you wouldn't even know that it was a redesign. I love the color choices and how it's just kind of inspired by those old Nintendo video games. Well, that is it for me today. Obviously, I'm really happy with how these turned out, but let me know what you think in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And let me know down below which logos you wanna see me redesign in the future. Make sure to join me next week when I go live and I'll see you in the next video.